This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we'll call to order the Public Safety, Health, and Welfare Committee meeting of August 11, 2020 at 7.02 p.m. Present are committee members Rosard, Williamson, and Limpert, as well as Council Members Kelly, Schumann, Glassburn, uh, Directors Lieber and Glauner, uh, and guests, uh, as well as our Council President Jones. Uh, this evening, we are here to consider a resolution 2020-80, which is a resolution authorizing the mayor to accept a donation of four new life pack CR2 defibrillators, AED, from the Clinton Clinic for use in the City of North Olmsted Division of Police. Uh, I will turn it over to Director Glauner in what should be one of our easier decisions this year. Go ahead, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, back in June, uh, Chief Wagner reached out to university hospitals to ask if they could help us during the COVID with any uh, equipment or anything like that. Unfortunately, they weren't. So he uh, made contact with somebody from Cleveland Clinic who said that they could not offer any COVID uh, equipment or anything like that, but that they were willing to uh, donate four uh, LifePak uh, CR2 defibrillators and they value at $9,555, and anything over $1,000 as a donation must be accepted by council. Uh, he has delivered them to the police station, but we can't use them until uh, council approves it, so they're sitting on his desk in his office at this time. Okay, uh, thank you, pretty straightforward. Um, just, I just have one quick question. It really doesn't matter one way or the other. It's a, a tremendous, donation on the part of Cleveland Clinic. Are these considered portable or stationary? No, these are portable to be placed in the cruisers. He had four of them, they'll be placed in four individual cruisers. So a first responding officer will have uh, the ability to utilize these if and have, they have to wait for a squad. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, don't, I don't have any other questions other than just a, a big thank you. Uh, on behalf of myself and, and the uh, Public Safety Committee to the Cleveland Clinic. So I'll open it up to committee members, questions or comments. Uh, Council Member Limpert, then Williamson. Yeah, Mr. Galoner, how, how many defibrillators do we have currently? We have two defibrillators in the police department. The fire department has one in every squad. We have two in the two cruisers and they gave us four more. So that would bring us to a total of six. And do we have any idea how long those, the lifespan of a defibrillator typically is? No, I do not. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Purcell. You're welcome. Uh, Councilwoman Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kalana, is there a lot of training that goes into this or is there is there classes that the officers are required to take prior to using these or is this something the fire department will the, the fire training? department is showing my, we have classes periodically here at city hall because we have defibrillators throughout city hall and fire will come down and show us and basically it's a no brain operation you open it up it has a diagram where to place them tells you to step back it actually reads and determines whether there's a shock needed if it reads that it does not need a shock you don't do anything, you just monitor it. But if it, the signal comes on and says you do need to shock, then you have to open and push a button. Uh, so it's it's very, very simple and it's the instructions are right on it. They could open them and use them tomorrow. Anybody could figure it out. But we do have training from the fire department, uh, either from uh, Lieutenant Hudak or uh, Dave Stein. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from council members? Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it helps, we have those at the court. And uh, all you have to do is uh, after a certain amount of time, you have to replace the batteries in them. They, they have a certain amount of lifespan and you have to replace the pads that you use on the individuals. Other than that, unless something happens to the uh, unit itself, that's all you really have to do to maintain it. Thank you. Um, 
Any other questions or comments from council? Mr. Schumann, do you have your hand raised or just stretching? Okay. Um, let the record reflect that uh, directors Lieber and Kopfer are also present for the meeting. Uh, Director Glonner, just a question. Uh, would it make sense to um, offer emergency and or suspension just to get these uh, into the field quicker and potentially uh, help save a life? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did want to ask for suspension. Uh, we got these while they were gone. But again, they are sitting in the chief's office. And if you're the person laying on the ground waiting for medical attention, I think an emergency would certainly uh, uh, be warranted. But I didn't want to you know, circumvent the process. Understood. No, appreciate that consideration. But uh, I, I'm going to, uh, for my fellow, fellow committee members, any uh, problem with suspension on this? OK. Uh, I have them in hand. No, I don't. No. OK. All right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairperson, are you going to suspend? And is there an emergency clause? Uh, well, that, that's my next question. So, oh, okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Glonner, uh, should I'm, I'm thinking that we should add the emergency clause and ask for suspension uh, if you're okay with that. Yes, sir. Okay. Terrific. All right. So, uh, at this time, uh, seeing no other questions or comments, uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion to all of council to uh, approve with amending to add the emergency clause and suspension. Uh, and I'll ask for a second. 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 Seconded by Councilwoman Williamson. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. That'll pass three to zero. And uh, we will conclude the meeting at 7.09 p.m.